Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be going over a really, really important topic, which is the Apple iOS 14 update. One, how this is affecting Facebook ads in general. Two, some of the steps that you need to be taking in order to make sure that you're prepared as best as we can be prepared for this update. And then number three, some tips that will help you combat some of this really annoying thing that's happening right now between Mac and Facebook, which is this update that is kind of messing with our ads. So uh, that is what we're gonna be covering in this video. Intro, 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 okay. <laughs> What's up guys, my name's Hannah Gardner. If you are new to the channel, we talk about everything and anything that has to do with e-commerce and building brands online. Yes, that's what we talk about. And if you are new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on your notification bell so you get notified every time we post a video. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right guys, so basically if you don't understand even what this iOS update is, what it is, it looks like this. So people that are getting the new iPhone are being given the opportunity to allow or to not allow tracking on their phones. And so for a lot of people that don't really understand marketing or ads, they automatically think, oh, tracking, like I don't wanna be tracked, so they opt out of it, when really all it's really doing, it's not stealing anyone's information or your credit cards or following your location or anything like that where it would be dangerous to your life. What it really is is basically saying, do you want targeted ads or not? And in theory, targeted ads actually enhance the user experience amongst social media. And so when people opt out of it, all you're saying is I don't want targeted ads. So when you go onto your Facebook and your Instagram, it's gonna just show you a bunch of ads that really have nothing to do with you. You're gonna still see ads, but it's like you might as well get ads that are showing you things that you're interested in. But a lot of people don't understand that. So when they do see this option, when they are getting the new iPhone, they're opting out of it. And so what this actually does when it comes to you, when you're running your Facebook ads, it's making your CPMs and your cost per purchase go up dramatically. And some of your analytics are not being tracked. So sometimes when you get sales now, inside your Facebook ad manager, your, attrib your attribution? your attribution is actually showing inaccurate data of actually how many sales you're generating in that attribution window. So if you have it set up that you have a seven day attribution window that if someone sees your ad today and then by five days later, maybe if they are not allowing targeted ads on that iPhone that they viewed the ad on and you got a sale from it still, your Facebook ads are actually gonna not show that data. So it's gonna look like you're making way less money than you are when you might still be getting sales from your ads. But on top of it, another thing that's happening is because of these updates, some of your pixel data that you may have accumulated over these however long you've been running your ads is actually gonna decrease in size. So a lot of your retargeting ads are actually going to get a hit with this as well. But basically that's what's happening with the iOS 14 updates and there's other issues that are happening to e-commerce sellers with email marketing as well. But just to have an understanding, that's what's happening. And so I'm gonna now jump into my computer and show you some things that you need to be doing to take action now on your Facebook ads account to kind of help combat this issue. Okay guys, so as you can see this screenshot here, this is actually straight from Facebook. It's telling us some things that we should do to make sure that we're ready for this update. Basically it says, if required, verify your domain in Facebook Business Manager. What this is, is I'm gonna show you right here inside of my Facebook Business Manager here. If you come over to these all tools section and you go to Events Manager, it's gonna bring you back to this page here. And what it's telling you to do is to come here to the aggregated event measurement tab. As you can see, it's got a purple new little sticker on it. You're going to come here and then you're gonna hit manage events. And now the first thing it's asking you to do is to verify your domain. You can come over to this here that is, has a full breakdown as well, along with my breakdown, because my account here is already an established account. So if you're a newer account, these steps might be different for you than they were for me, but essentially to verify your domain, once I came to this section, it had a button that was highlighted that took me through the steps to verify my domain. So 
I'm just saying for you, it might be a little bit different. So please check out this whole article here that will explain how to verify your domain as well. If that just coming here and coming to verify your domain doesn't work for you. Okay, so <laughs> I'm out of breath. All right, the next thing is that you're gonna set up and prioritize up to eight web events per domain and event manager. So obviously we're in e-commerce, other people that do lead gen and they're running their ads through funnels, it's a little bit different if their end goal isn't a sale, but for e-commerce, it's pretty straightforward. As you can see, when you come down here, we want purchase is the top event. Then we want add payment info, initiate checkout, add to cart and view content. And yes, you want this to be at the top. You want the lowest priority to be view content. So if you don't have this set up, you might only have purchase um, set up. You're gonna wanna come in here and hit manage events. I don't actually wanna do this because if I do do this, it's gonna mess up my own events. So and it takes 72 days to optimize. So during this optimiz optimization time, you might wanna pause your existing ads that are running because it's going to affect them probably negatively as it's making these updates. And it does take three days apparently. So yeah, basically you wanna set it up accordingly to the lowest priority, to the highest priority. Also, in order to do this, even before this, you need to make sure that you have a Facebook pixel installed. If you don't know what a Facebook pixel is or you don't have one installed into your Facebook ads account, this video is probably not the video that you should be watching. You need to go into my playlist and go look up how to set up your Facebook pixel and do that before you do this. <laughs> okay, so once you man add these events in order here, it's gonna take the 72 hours to update, but essentially that's all you really have to do. And then they also say, review your ads, as I already said before, the third step in ad sets that will be paused via the resource center tab in Facebook Ads Manager and, the, and update or replace them. So it's just saying like, go check your ads. If they're turning out that it's turning all turning to shit because of this, you might have to stop them and recreate them, duplicate them and restart them or update them or update the whatever conversion pixel that or whatever conversion that you're going for to just like reset it. I'm assuming that's what that means. All right, I know I look different, but that's because we just lost that video. So I have to refilm this video and I'm wearing a new outfit. So that's what happened. Okay, so we're jumping into some suggestions that I actually got from Facebook about some things that you can do with your ads that can help combat this whole situation with the iOS updates. So the first thing that they suggest is to monitor your backend sales because of the changes and because now the reporting and the attribution windows are a little bit skewed. It may look like inside Facebook that your sales are a lot less than what they are, but then if you go and monitor your, what sales you're actually making, if that ratio looks like it is similar to what it used to be, then I would say don't, don't not run the ads, right? Keep the ads running. So just keep that in mind. Keep checking, obviously check your backend sales to see what they look like in relation to your ad spend. The next recommendation is to go broader on your targeting. And I know this is like opposite of what everyone, you always wanna do hyper-targeted ads, but remember because now these custom audiences or the audiences that we've built are going to decrease significantly, now your data, you don't have as much data as you think you do before the updates. So go broader on the targeting, focus on broad targeting rather than retargeting as your pool for retargeting, obviously it will become smaller. So yes, I know that sucks, but um, until that pixel data gets vamped up again, try to just broaden your audiences. And then they also said to complement the retargeting with a lookalike. So obviously with the retargeting, most people are using custom audiences to do that targeting. They're recommending that you do a one to 2% lookalike audience with a custom audience. So that's super, super broad. And I guess, uh, again, that's just going to help let Facebook find and re-nurture that pixel data. So one or 2% lookalike website visitors or purchasers with your custom audiencing for retargeting ads. And then the last recommendation is consider using a CRM or a customer list. So obviously like an email list or any phone numbers or anything that you have, you know, put that into a custom audience, make lookalikes off of that because obviously customer lists, that's, you know, out of Facebook data, that's 
offline data, not offline data, but <laughs> data that's not going to be affected by the iOS 14 updates. So if you do have a customer list and you haven't utilized it yet, do put that into a Facebook custom audience. And you know, it's usually exported like an email list is the most common one, export it as a CSV file, use their template inside of Facebook when you're setting it up. And so you can pull as much data from that list as you can. So first name, last name, phone numbers, city, state, country. Um, if you have um, female, male demographics, if you have phone numbers, all of that data will be super, super important when you're building that custom audience. So overall, those are some tips that you can utilize to help combat, you know, how your Facebook ads will be affected negatively. So it's kind of like survival of the fittest, you know, yes, this is kind of like a shitty situation, but with any suffering or downfall of something, there's always an opportunity in that. And that's kind of the way that you need to look at it with this. So you can imagine the people that <laughs> are just starting to get into Facebook ads or are little, making little to no money with their Facebook ad spend, you can imagine that they're probably gonna stop running Facebook ads maybe because of this, or it's gonna scare a lot of people, which in turn will lower the competition, eventually reduce the CPM prices or the cost per purchase prices, and it'll actually be a beneficial thing for the people that do stay in and just change with the times and still move forward with their Facebook ads. So, all right, guys, if you got any value out of this video, please do go ahead and like this video. Ask any comments in the comment section in the comments section and subscribe to the channel. And